Amazon Luna, their flagship cloud-based gaming service, has finally hit the market. In this video, we're going to take a look at two circumstances of running Amazon Luna to see if it's worth your hard-earned money. The first one's going to be running it on an Amazon Fire Stick using a dedicated Android controller, and the second one's going to be running it on an Apple MacBook Pro 16-inch edition using a PlayStation 4 controller. And it all starts right now. Hey there, if it's your first time here, my name is Blaine, and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of your video game experiences. If you like original content about restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other great video game content, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out. Let's check out Amazon Luna together. All the way back in 1980, Mattel released their Play Cable downloadable game service. It got people so excited they ran right out of their houses. Even horses got excited about it. Check that. You could download games right to your Intellivision console using your cable company and a modem. It was so well thought of that even Mickey Mantle himself stumped for the company. And now it's 2020 and Amazon's looking to put their hat in the streaming game arena with Amazon Luna. Much like similar streaming gaming services, the goal is to be able to play your games on multiple devices and platforms and still have the same gaming experience. In fact, Amazon's advertising that people are so excited about Amazon Luna that they're running out of their houses. And that even dogs themselves are excited at the prospect. My friend Earl used to say, Blaine, there ain't nothing new under the sun, partner. I think he was right. Well, uninspired and unoriginal advertising campaign notwithstanding, let's take a look at Amazon Luna and how it actually performs. The first of these tests is going to be on an Amazon Fire Stick from 2020. Hey, it's their hardware. It ought to run great on their own dedicated hardware, right? A quick note here. Amazon says you need at least a 10 meg download speed in order to play these services correctly. In this case, I have 479 down and 23 up. We're good. Once you get signed up for the service you want with Luna, you have two options. You can either play it with a secondary controller like a PS4 or Xbox One controller, or you can play it with the dedicated Luna controller. These cost $49.99 US. It's probably best to try the 7 day free trial before you buy the controller though. So I'll be using that SteelSeries Android controller I showed you earlier in the video here. To use the Amazon Luna game streaming service on your Fire TV Stick, you need to download the Amazon Luna app. You can go to the search bar and just type it in with your remote that comes with the device, or you could use Amazon's voice assistant to help you locate it that way. On your home screen, select Luna, and then select the Get button on screen using the remote provided with your device. Once it's finished downloading and installing, You'll have the option to open it right away. You can go ahead and do that right from here. You're greeted with this loading screen from Amazon and Luna. Once Luna loads up on your Fire TV stick, you'll be asked which account you want to sign into. There's only one account on it and I'm Blaine, so I'm gonna sign in on that one. It'll give you some basic tips for using Luna, and the one that I'm most focused on here is going to be looking at the library of games that are available to you. Once you get inside the Luna interface, I'm going to go up and select the library so we can check out how many games are actually here and what's available. By my initial count on this, I counted 55 total games available for immediate streaming. There are other streaming services out there that have a lot more variety, but this one's really just getting started, so having 55 games at the outset isn't all that bad. Alright, I'm not looking to stretch and tax the hardware to death on an initial test run. Let's just try something simple like Contra from the original arcade game from 1987. It's 379 kilobytes. It could literally be downloaded right to the Fire TV stick in less than one second. All right, let's take stock again real quick while it's loading up. We need 10 megs per second of download speed. We've got 479. We need a controller. We've got an Android-based SteelSeries controller hooked up, and everything's loaded up and ready to go here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and load up the Contra ROM and get this thing fired up and going. And I'll tell you what I noticed right off the rip. This thing is laggy. About a quarter of a second between button presses and action on screen. That's about 250 milliseconds of lag time. With the firing, it's maybe not quite as bad, but with the jumps, it's 
fatal. And I do find just a little bit of choppiness in the gameplay itself. I guess that's to be expected when you play something through a streaming service, but this game is so small, it's 379 kilobytes. The whole thing can literally be downloaded in less than one second. I just find it a little surprising that there's going to be some chop in this when Amazon provides the hardware and they provide the streaming service itself and we've got dozens and dozens of times of the bandwidth that it requires to do a basic task like this. Okay, I guess that's enough of watching me getting slaughtered in this quarter muncher of an arcade game. Let's go ahead back out to the Luna main menu and take a look at a different kind of game, one that has both that retro vibe and a contemporary flair to it. Back at the game library, let's load up Sonic Mania. I've got this game on the Nintendo Switch and I'm well familiar with its gameplay. You know, as they say here in the South, one of those things that just gets under my craw a little bit is that they're going to show you advertisements in your paid streaming services. I think you should get one or the other. Alright, so the game loads up pretty quickly, which I think is great. Title screen, everything's looking pretty good so far here. Maybe it was just the Contra was just not a well-suited game for this platform or something, because everything looks pretty good at this point. All right, moving forward. Let's go ahead and dig right into the game and we'll go into Green Hill Zone. Cool, Green Hill Zone time it is. And once again, it's another festival of lag. Again, I don't have my Olympic spec stopwatch here at the ready to say exactly how many milliseconds of lag are present. But if I had to guess at it, it's about a quarter of a second again between button press and action on screen, and that's about 250 milliseconds of lag. And that just doesn't make for a good gameplay experience. And again, I just noticed a little bit of choppiness here. You know, I just expected that contemporary hardware playing what's essentially a retro game was going to be able to play this at a full emulation speed, and it just doesn't. For the three or four people somewhere on planet Earth that have never actually played Sonic the Hedgehog, they might not know that there's anything wrong with this. It might look okay, and it might play okay in spite of the lag. But I'm going to tell you, if you've ever played this on a Sega Genesis, you know how crisp and tight this game is. And this experience on Amazon Luna just isn't it. But what if that 2020 model Fire TV Stick just isn't up to the spec? Let's give this a go on a MacBook Pro 16 inch that's specced out and see if it performs any better. On the Luna website, you can download the version that matches the platform that you intend to use Luna with. In this case, Mac has a devoted app specifically for Luna. And this Mac is up to the task. It has an i9 8 core processor, 16 gigs of memory, 8 gigs of dedicated video memory and a 1 terabyte solid state hard drive built right in. All it takes is dragging the application file for Luna right into the applications folder on the Mac and then launching it for the first time. And you get the same splash screen introductory screen that you get on the Fire TV stick. I'm still me, so I'll sign in as me. And you get the same splash screen that tells you basically what things to look for in the menus. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to go launch those exact same two games and just measure performance on a much more robust set of specs. Okay, here's Contra from the main menu of the Luna game library. And more ads. Great. Waste no time. Let's get right into the Contra game itself. It's essentially that same ROM, 379 kilobytes. Ready to play. In this case, I'm using a PS4 DualShock controller connected over USB right to the MacBook Pro. And boy, what a chop fest this thing is. Look at this. I can't believe this. It runs worse than it does on the significantly lower spec Amazon Fire TV stick. And I didn't lose my mind yet. I didn't decide to just start going around the world to the left. The controller just literally got stuck pushing the player to the left and would not clear up no matter what. I mean, the buttons still work fine, but I could not move my character anymore no matter what. All right, so we know Contra's a wash. Let's go look at Sonic Mania and see if it fares any better. And no, it sure didn't. It's another bag full of lag. Here's the thing, it's about a quarter of a second again. I can't believe how laggy these controls are in these games. 
I mean, Sonic the Hedgehog, this thing's been around for 30 years. It's just surprising to me that these things would perform so poorly. And let's talk for just a minute about that blast processing that has become chop suey here thanks to the Amazon Luna service. Take a look at this. In just a moment here, you're gonna see exactly how bad the chop is on this thing. When it gets just a little bit, not even like the supersonic speed type stuff, just a little bit of speed fed to his ride here, watch what happens. Wait for it in three, two, one, go. Holy cow. This is like unplayable frame rate stuff right here. Once again, it looks like all those people and pets that ran out of the house are going to be disappointed if they go load this game up too. So in the end analysis, what do I think about Amazon Luna? Well, if you like spending your time sending in diagnostic reports and paying them a monthly service fee for the privilege of doing this, then you've found the right gaming cloud service for you. But personally, I'd recommend that you put your hard-earned quarters into someone else's coin door. Amazon Luna's just not ready for prime time. Until the Luna gaming service becomes more mature, more robust, and more enjoyable to play, I have to give it a one out of five stars. If you signed up for the free trial, don't forget to cancel so you don't get billed. And if you bought the controller, send that sucker back for a refund. You can put that money toward a good quality PS5 game. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on great original video game content as it's posted. And check out this video here, shown on screen and linked in the pinned comments and description below. Thanks so much for being here on the video with me. I really appreciate the time we spend together, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.